Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Conception Channel. I'm your host, Spence Pentland. And today we're going to dive into pharmaceutical options for sperm optimization, something I don't think that is talked enough about, something you may benefit from, something I think more people should potentially speak to their REI or their urologist about as it is an option. It's an option for men that have poor sperm quality, low sperm count, azoospermic or no sperm. It has shown, or these various uh, forms of treatment have shown benefit in many men. So it is worth a shot. So let's die, of course, in addition to taking care of yourself, healthy lifestyle. So let's dive in. Uh, spermatogenesis, quick overview of how sperm is made, because there's a theme here that you'll hear over and over and over, because the ultimate mechanism be mechanisms behind all of these medications is basically boils down to the same thing to produce sperm. And uh, here is the, the foundation of that. So spermatogenesis, the creation of sperm is approximately a three month process in which stem cells in the testicle become uh, mature sperm on the Sertoli cells in the seminiferous tubules in the testicles. So Sertoli cells are stimulated to produce sperm by FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. And they use testosterone to support that process. So the testosterone that's used in that process is produced by the Leydig cells in the testicles when they're stimulated by luteinizing hormone. So luteinizing hormone from the Leydig cells in the testicles make testosterone. Uh, Sertoli cells stimulated by follicle stimulating hormone or FSH produce the sperm and they use testosterone. So uh, keep in mind those that terminology as we move forward. A uh, brief word on testosterone before we move forward. <clears throat> testosterone is extremely important, uh, actually vital in, in the production of sperm, but exogenous or, or sperm taken from the outside in uh, medications, hormones, actually impair sperm production. So if you're doing that, you'll likely need to stop. Some men do seem to still be able to produce sperm, depending on the levels. A low-level testosterone replacement therapy might be might be okay, but uh, typically it's something you need to stop. Uh, when testosterone levels are raised, uh, an increase in estrogen also most often occurs. So an aromatase inhibitor drug like anastrozole, which we'll go through later, uh, would be necessary because it reduces the the conversion of testosterone into estrogen because enough estrogen or enough testosterone rolling through your body uh more estrogen as well so we want to uh minimize that uh because too much estrogen has its own implications and finally testosterone improves sexual function male vitality and uh it's something that a lot of men these days are deficient in and and feel great when they uh, raise their levels. So the medications that can do that and, and improve sperm are clomiphene citrate, or better known as Clomed, human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG, which is uh, the pregnancy hormone. Uh, it is used in IVF cycles to trigger women, help mature the follicles that are growing and, and ovulate. Um, it is also the, the hormone that's measured on a uh, pregnancy test. Uh, but essential in, or it can trigger uh, spermatogenesis in men. Growth hormone, I think we all understand. Uh, anastrozole or arimidex, which we just spoke of, that arim aromatase inhibitor. And uh, recombinant follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, something a woman would inject uh, during an IVF cycle to grow her, her follicles. So in men, sperm. So let's uh, jump in. Clomiphene citrate or Clomid is a <clears throat> selective estrogen receptor modulator or a CIRM, uh, which blocks estrogen's interaction with the brain. Uh, so estrogen comes up to the brain and the brain determines what level it's at and what to do. So when that's blocked, the result is an increase in luteinizing hormone, which we just spoke about, which produces, uh, stimulates the production of, of testosterone and follicle stimulating hormone which stimulates the production of sperm. So 
Clomid works by blocking estrogen interaction with the brain, increases LH and FSH, increasing sperm and testosterone. So easy oral medication to take for men, something worth trying. So another is human chorionic gonadotropin. We just spoke of that, the pregnancy hormone, HCG, typically injections. They're approved for use with hypogonadism or uh, basically when male testicles aren't producing testosterone. So it's, as we just said, testosterone is essential for sperm production. And the way HCG works is it, it acts, it looks chemically similar enough to LH or luteinizing hormone. That's how it's used in an IVF cycle to um, induce ovulation or to finally mature the follicles uh, that a woman is, is, is growing with their stimulation. <clears throat> so since it looks enough like luteinizing hormone, it acts like it and it triggers the body into doing what LH does. So in the Leydig cells in the testicles, LH helps them produce uh, or triggers them to produce testosterone. Um, and that testosterone helps the uh, sperm production in the Sertoli cells in the testicles as well. So uh, again, this uh, as a note, this whenever you're raising testosterone levels, you may need to use that aromatase inhibitor in Ostrazole. Growth hormones next, GH or somatotropin. Uh, it's also known as human growth hormone or HGH. It's a peptide hormone that stimulates growth, cell reproduction, cell regeneration. Um, in gonadotro or uh, sorry, in growth hormone deficient men, sperm parameters are almost always low or azoospermic. So azo is uh, uh, no sperm. No sperm can be found in testing. So growth hormones essential in, in sperm production. So at the testicular level, it's got autocrine and paracrine uh, functionality, which, which is influencing uh, uh, tissues close by and, and tissues that it is within, as well as uh, IGF-1 or uh, insulin growth factor 1. At the testicular level, it promotes sperm production, particularly early development and the, mat uh, the maturation phase involved in in those phases and unique about growth hormone is that it uh i've read in in various uh papers that it is believed to be effective in men who aren't responding to some of these other therapies so uh it's worth a shot to try some growth hormone if you were uh, not responding to other treatments uh recombinant follicle stimulating hormone or fsh uh really simple, hopefully here to understand the potential use of this. Uh, FSH stimulates per sperm production. The Sertoli cells are stimulated by FSH in the, in the testicles and they use testosterone to support that process. Um, uh, we know this by now, um, the recombinant FSH medication, which would be just literally uh, injecting uh, FSH into your body, usually would often need to be combined with something that will also produce luteinizing hormone. So uh, the testosterone that's needed for sperm production is produced in the Leydig cells in the testicles when they're stimulated by luteinizing hormone, which I think it's the fourth time I've said that, but we need luteinizing hormone to produce testosterone for the Sertoli cells to use to, to produce the sperm. So it's, it's all working in unison. And finally, what we mentioned, the uh, anastrozole or the arimidex is a, a generic name for that drug uh, or trade name. Um, anastrozole, it's, it's an aromatase inhibitor. It is typically used in men with fertility issues do, that have a higher estrogen to testosterone ratio or levels. Um, aromatase, aromatase inhibitor is what anastrozole is. So aromatase is an enzyme in our body that converts testosterone into estrogen. So when we inhibit that, uh, we inhibit the, the testosterone getting turned into estrogen, which results in higher levels of testosterone. It stays as testosterone. Uh, it also results in lower levels of estrogen, which in turn, if you remember back to Clomid, uh, when the brain thinks there's less estrogen, it produces more follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone, 
which stimulate the production of testosterone and sperm, which is, I feel like I've repeated that over and over. And hopefully that makes sense that that is the base mechanism to how all these medications are going to help the body produce more uh, and more quality sperm. So just a side note too uh, about antioxidants. So since if there's something wrong with sperm, there's a good chance that there's some DNA damage from oxidative stress at all, as well, since sperm is really susceptible to uh, DNA damage uh, from oxidative stress. Uh, so when you're trying to optimize your sperm, it's always recommended to take an antioxidant blend that is specifically intended or known to support sperm health, as well as supplements that are known to support uh, uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or NAD plus production, which plays a role in uh, DNA protection and repair. So some of the heavy hitters here are glutathione, nicotinamide riboside, vitamin C, carnitine tartrate, zinc, CoQ10. <clears throat> but again, ask or speak to someone you trust that knows what you might need more than others. So there you have it. Uh, the medications again, clomiphene citrate or clomid, human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, growth hormone, anastrozole, uh, or FSH, recombinant FSH follicle stimulating hormone. There you go. Pharmaceutical options for sperm optimization. Talk to your REI, talk to your urologist and see if any of these might be beneficial for you.